my name is Sarah and this body image after baby is a little bit different than I think the rest of them have been. Um, I just had my daughter February 14th of this year and unfortunately um, it was a stillborn. Um, there was a few things that were going on during pregnancy that my doctor had not like warned me of and I wasn't aware and all of a sudden she just stopped moving um, six months into my pregnancy so I was due May 25th of this year so I shouldn't even have had my daughter yet um, I decided to share my story basically just because there's I think a lot of women that go through this kind of thing like I did and I did not have anybody to reach out to <coughs> in particular that I knew like has gone through something like this and that is extremely heartbreaking and something that I struggle with every day. I mean I'm only four weeks postpartum right now and um, my body image is up and down uh, pretty much throughout every day. I think I think about like it's really hard to explain but my body is the reason for her death like a failure to do to my body something that I have that I was unaware of and it's it makes me feel very poorly of myself in a lot of um, aspects because I think I did this you know it I'm the one that killed my daughter basically which I know is not the case in my doctors is it's really my doctor's fault but it's like it feels like it's my fault because it's my body so my body image is just up and down all the time so I contacted Shaylee I've actually talked to her a few times before and I was like this is a little bit different I don't have a child alive and uh, I'm not very far into postpartum so I don't have a lot of experience long term but my body image right now I feel is something that I could share this journey with like a lot of women that don't know or experience this and don't understand like their feelings and emotions that are probably very very uh, valid but you just can't you don't know what's right you know so um basically um when I got pregnant I was very shocked I was not ready to be pregnant whatsoever um I was angry so angry um, because I wasn't ready. I mean, I'm getting married to my husband, and the next week I found out I was pregnant a week before my wedding. And, um, my emotions with that was just up and down. Like, I was excited to have a baby, and then I wasn't excited to have a baby, and I was mad, and I was upset. And then I got really sick. I have something called hyperemesis. I don't know if this is just this pregnancy, or if it's any time I get pregnant, or what but this is something that I'm gonna or I've dealt with uh, with Ellie which is my daughter's name and I was puking to the point where I was losing so much weight that my muscles were deteriorating and I was admitted to the hospital on my birthday or actually I was let out of the hospital on my birthday but it was like that week I was there for four or five days my dog is being a goofball sorry um, but uh, I was admitted and they were like, look, you have this and you need to be on some medication because I was very against taking medication. I'm like, look, I don't want to take medicine that could hurt my daughter, you know. And in the long run, I was only killing myself. Um, but I was just so dedicated, but it was really stupid of me. But I was very sick and um, when I realized that I could have lost her, that's when I really became attached to her. Um, the best day of my entire life, above my wedding, above anything, was the day I found out she was a girl. Um, because I wanted a little princess so bad. And, um, <laughs> she literally, that 20 week scan was the most amazing day. Because I just, I mean, I fell in love with this perfect thing. And, and she was just the light of my life is the light of my life, you know, she's, you know, in heaven looking down on me being something that I feel like I now have to do well in life and do things better and 
be a better person just because I know that she sees me and has like a better, like with a child or a baby even, you can't, they don't really know when you're doing something wrong for the most part for a while and then like when they become children like they understand and they see and you have to be a good example but I feel like now it's like just another reason like God's up there watching me be bad or make mistakes and sin and blah 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 and now um, my daughter's there too and it's like wow I can't look like a fool in front of her uh, and she has like the wisdom of you know I don't even know how to explain it. Now she's, you know, perfect, and and so I feel very a lot of pressure to be a better person now, and I feel so much guilt um, in wasting the time I had with her, being mad that I was pregnant with her. Um, I feel a lot of embarrassment about that. Like I feel like even though it's very normal to feel angry about being pregnant. Um, I I feel like I wasted half my pregnancy being mad and you know I lost her at 26 weeks so I only had that six week span of really 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 loving and enjoying being pregnant because I was throwing up every day till the day that she um, passed away I was puking every morning and actually something that made me really nervous was not throwing up and I said to my husband I was like I'm not throwing up um I haven't thrown up in three days <laughs> you know like that that made me kind of like what the heck's going on because that was something you know my doctor had told me is a good sign you know the fact that I'm so sick means that she's thriving and um so um I went to the hospital and every obviously uh it, it did not work out and um so I delivered her naturally I was trying to be strong and I had said to myself and I told my husband and my mom like look this is the last experience I have with her um, it's the last time I get to f or the first and the last time I get to feel her um, and I want this part I want to feel it and they basically talked me talked to me for 30 minutes trying to tell me I didn't deserve to feel pain right now and that I should just be numb and blah 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 and so finally after a good long labor I had said okay fine I'll get my epidural literally the second they pushed that needle through my back I said take it out I said I'm not doing this and delivered her all like I mean they had to put a test amount in but I felt every inch of it like every second of my labor I felt because they they had they had like put like I don't even know they said the minimum like to test to see if it was going through and um, I I labored so quickly after that like she literally just came out directly after that so um, they're like yeah you had her all natural like that I mean I was walking 15 minutes after I gave birth to her um, because, it, I mean, it just wasn't enough epidural, it just felt like my legs kind of fell asleep for a second, but it was way after, and I could still, like, move and everything, so they're like, yeah, you had her all natural, and I'm like, good, I'm, I was so proud of myself, that was something that, now even to this day, I'm like, I'm so proud of myself that I stuck to my, like, what I be believed, and, um, went with my gut, like, I just wanted to experience that. And I understand where my husband and my mom are coming from, like, with not having to feel the pain, and, you know, there's no gain at the end of the pain, you know? So, I understand that, but it was something that I just felt like I had to do for her to honor her, and, um, <coughs> so I did, and postpartum so far, I look at myself and I say, one day I'm like, wow, my body was a home to this child and it's an amazing thing what my body could do. And then it's like, um, at the same time I'm saying my body didn't do what it was supposed to do, how am I supposed to feel? Um, I feel mixed emotions. Like the day I came home from the hospital, actually the day after, I was at my parents' house uh, because I wasn't ready to be home. And, uh, I took a shower, and I got out of the shower, and I'm looking at my body, you know, deflated, and 
just the saggy blah. And after delivery is when I got all my new stretch marks. I had some from puberty, but uh, I didn't get any during pregnancy. But after delivery, my stomach just lit up with red stretch marks, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like... I looked for five seconds, I'm like, wow, my body's beautiful, you know, this, this is what it's supposed to look like right now, and I came out and was like, telling my husband and my parents, I'm like, I feel so beautiful right now, like, I did something amazing, you know, I created a life inside me, and I just wish that it would have worked out, but, um, <laughs> I'm, I, like, feel like there's so many things that are coming out that don't make sense and my dog's messing around but I'm it's such a raw thing to talk about that I don't feel like I can go back through this again so y'all just have to bear with me with that because I can't I can't like do this again because I might miss something or I might say something even worse and I really just can't um deal with going through the whole conversation again um so you'll just have to excuse the things that are you know not perfect um so that's something that I deal with a lot is fighting between how perfect and beautiful that my body is even though it is so scarred, you know. It's a good it's a good example of how I feel. Like if you if I were to lift up my shirt and you saw the marks and the stretch marks and the sagging skin, it's totally how I feel emotionally and it's beautiful because it's like this is what God intended my body to be. You know, uh, this is what he made me for, is to be able to do this. And I feel very blessed in the fact that I was given the opportunity to carry my daughter for as long as I did. Uh, I feel very bitter for the fact that I didn't get to carry her longer and then have her um, for, you know, I'm supposed, like, I'm supposed to have her. Um, I wish I could be her mom and, you know, show her my stomach and be like, look, this is what you did to me, uh, and I feel proud of it, you know, um, I, I do work out sometimes, I'm still not supposed to be doing anything like heavy activity, like I said, I'm only four weeks postpartum, um, I busted my butt the other day, actually on Thursday, and I regretted every second of it. My body was like, you're not supposed to be doing this yet. Like, I'm still healing. Um, <coughs> which is why they give you the six week limit. But I wasn't listening because I really want to try again in the summer for another child. Like, once you have a baby and you lose it, like, you're in mommy mode now. At least I am. And I, it's like every day my stomach feels empty and it's like, I should be pregnant right now. I should be able eight months pregnant, um, I should be due in ten weeks, you know, um, it doesn't, it feels weird to be back into my pre-pregnancy clothing, and, um, it feels weird not being a mom, too, like, I could have a four-week-old child right now, or I could be thirty weeks pregnant, you know, I'm in both of these, I'm like in a state of limbo, so I feel like it's just something that I need to do. I need to <laughs> get pregnant again, and I feel like that will raise our spirits a lot, um, because obviously right now it's really hard for my husband and I. He's grieving in a different way than I am, but we, you know, we want to be parents, like, we want that little princess, you know, um. We want that baby, you know, we love each other and we want to be, have a family, you know, and it's, it's so hard to be a mom when you don't have a child. Everyone's like, you are a mom. The second you got pregnant, you were a mom. I'm like, I'm not doing anything that a mom does, you know, I don't wake up five million times in the middle of the night and I don't change any diapers. Well, actually I do because I'm a nanny, but other than that, <laughs> I don't change my child's diapers and I'm not teaching a child things, you know, I don't feel like a mom. Maybe I am a mom, but my child is dead, you know, and that's the truth. And you don't get out of, like, once you're a mom, you don't come out of mom mode, ever. Like, I feel empty, and so that's, it's not so much about my body image, because my body image is, like, 
like I've said, it's deflated and saggy and I don't know what to do with it. And it's beautiful in the sense that this is what your body is supposed to do. And I don't feel uncomfortable in my own skin. But I do blame my body. I feel it failed me. So it's so hard to know my own body image. Like, what do I say when I look at myself in the mirror? Physically, I am still... I still look pregnant, um, uh, I still feel pregnant a lot of times, I'm waiting for my first period to come so that's something that I feel is coming very soon because I'm having cramps now and I'm just like this is surreal, like this doesn't feel, this doesn't feel like this is my life, like where's my child, I'm still pregnant, it's insane. I have so many feelings and emotions, I'm not very good at saying what I want to say in an organized fashion, so I hope you guys understood and know my story a little bit better. Um, it's a sad story, but I'm hoping that it ends well. I'm hoping at the end of all this, there is something greater and bigger and better. Um, I mean, that's all I can hope for. Um, I, the loss of a child is the worst pain uh, anyone could ever imagine like you can't imagine this kind of pain there's no way I could have explained it to you pre pre the situation and um, for those of you who have gone through a miscarriage or a child loss I just feel so much pain and sorrow for you um, it's something that I believe that we will never stop feeling um, there there should be a rainbow at the end of the storm, you know, that's what I call them, rainbow babies, and I think that's really cheesy, but it's something that I kind of cling to now, and I just hope that that's the case for me and my husband and my life. Um, I really do, and I hope that's the case for anybody that has to go through something this traumatizing. It's just sad, you know, and, uh... There's not really much else to say about that because it's just, you don't know until you go through something like this and I hope none of you ever have to go through this kind of pain, you know, waking up so angry, you are literally, you have a fever from anger. I mean, I was admitted in the hospital a week postpartum, literally one week postpartum because I was so mad that I was having pain. I guess, you know, they say heartbreak can kill a person. It's pain from heartbreak, you know. Um, that's what they told me, too. They're like, there's nothing wrong with you. They did everything they could have possibly done. And they're like, you're just in pain, you know. <laughs> Emotional pain causes physical pain, and that's something that I've learned is a very true statement. Um, I am surprised, actually, at how painful emotional pain can be. Uh, it was chest pains and I couldn't breathe, like I just was not breathing, you know, it was like my chest was hurting and it was like down on my side and I'm like, what the heck's going on with me, like what is this pain and they're like, there's no explanation, you're just in pain and it's just stress induced and blah blah blah, so, you know, I don't ever wish this on, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, you know. It's hard and it's sad, and I'm hoping that through all of this, there is a greater good. I have to believe that something, this happened for a reason. I don't know what it is, but I, I know that my God is good, and I know that His plan is good, and His plan for my life is good. So I have to believe that even though this is, I feel like I'm living in hell. It's like I wake up and I'm broken, you know? I'm a broken person. <laughs> way broken, you know, uh, there's not, nothing that anyone can say or do to make that pain go away, um, but anyway, thanks y'all for listening to my story, um, my Twitter name is Sarah Lacey, S-A-R-A-H-H-L-A-C-Y, um, my Instagram is the same, so you guys can follow me on that, I have a YouTube, but it's, there's nothing on it right now. I used to vlog, but they're all in private because, I don't know, ever since, like, this whole situation, I just, 
it's not a big thing for me right now. I don't, I don't want my previous life, it doesn't feel like my life. So this is probably going to be my new first vlog. Um, but uh, my name is Sarah Norman on, um, what the heck, YouTube, and I think you can find me through that. And also same with Facebook. You guys, if any of y'all have gone through this, feel free to message me and we can like share experiences and just, you know, talk about the kind of pain that you're going through because it's something to me, talking about it is such a healing, like, it's just like a bomb of healing, like, I don't even know how to explain it, like, I can't get the words out. It is like a healing bomb when I talk about it. It's like, I don't know. So if somebody needs to talk to me, go ahead and message me on Facebook. We can talk. And, uh... That's it. Thanks, guys.